Do I really need a portfolio? Sure do. Do you really need to ask? Only a fool would apply for jobs without a portfolio. Okay. What is up guys? My name is Jonathan. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how you can build a portfolio to show off your web development skills. The first thing I want to talk about is why. Why build a portfolio? What is the objective of building a portfolio? The objective of building a portfolio is to make you stand out amongst the crowd and increase your chances of being noticed by a potential employer. As impressive and as amazing as your resume is, employers can't really get a good sense of who you are just by reading about what you may or may not have done. Believe it or not, a lot of people don't really tell the whole truth on their resumes. So, as a result, a lot of employers are skeptical. They're kind of playing a guessing game when they're hiring new employees. To give yourself more credibility and show the employer that you do, in fact, have the skills and experiences to build a website, start by building a portfolio. To recap, the reasons why you want to build a portfolio is because one, it gives the employer an idea of who you are, and two, because it gives you credibility and something to actually show for. So, now that we know why you should build a portfolio, let's jump into the how. Step number one, know your target audience. You wanna start off by asking yourselves, what kind of job are you looking for? Are you looking for a front-end developer job, back-end developer, full stack, what is it? Of course, if you excel at all of these aspects of web development, great. That's an amazing place to be, especially if you're still trying to land that first dev job. But for those of you just starting out, that could be a little tough. I know, I've been there, we all have, and I can empathize with you, but there's still a way to give yourself a fighting chance. And that is to tailor your portfolio and your side projects to the type of job that you're targeting. What does that mean? If you're trying to become a front-end developer, then you probably want to focus on the appearance of the website. How does it look? How does it feel? What is the user interface and user experience like? Just focusing on these small details can really go a long way. If you're targeting a back-end developer position, then start by creating side projects that are more complex and dynamic that deal with maybe um, APIs or persistent data, for instance, an application that stores and retrieves data from a database. Now that you know what position you're targeting, we need to start thinking about how you can add your own flavor to it. This brings us to step number two, be creative. The whole reason why you want to build a portfolio in the first place is to stand up from all the noise. So, needless to say, you need to find a way to show the employer what makes you uniquely you. This means that you need to look inside of yourself and find out what makes you special. What is your mission? What, what is your story? What are your values? You know, what's your aesthetic? Whatever it may be, be creative and be resourceful. I personally suck at web design, so I try to take as much inspiration as I can from other portfolios online. So what I mean by that is you can actually go to Google and type out, let's see, top web developer portfolios and see what we get. As you can see, there are a ton of results. 35 examples, 20 memorable web design portfolio examples to inspire your own. Yeah, so click on one of these guys. Have a nice landing page right here, giving a quick bio of who he is and what he does. A button leading probably to his projects page. Nice little uh, profile picture there. Not your average software web developer or software developer. Dope. And yeah, this one's awesome. I love this one. Half designer, half coder. 
It's got a he's got a great way of representing it in this little background picture. Another thing I like doing is actually just going to the images right here and just taking inspiration from how people have designed it based off of images. For example, if right here you're like, oh, I like that. I like that he has the navigation in the middle and it's really small so that the user can really see the rest of the page, then that's, you know, that's a nice insight to take from that. Um, and maybe you like the color from this, you got a kind of light red to a pink and kind of a gradient going from top to bottom with the brand kind of matching up with that. This one's really interesting too, just a completely red filter over it, it seems like. Check my work, probably leading to the projects. So obviously everyone's on that and you should be too. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff here. Ah, uh, this guy is super cool right here. He's got a tree for a beard. That is awesome. That's, that's so dope. Yeah. <laughs> so be creative with it. Don't let this creative aspect of it stop you from creating a portfolio. Um, yeah, make sure you use all the resources you can online. There's a ton of it. And there you go. Last but not least, step number three is to showcase your projects. Don't forget to include links of your projects in your portfolio, no matter how big or how small. If you don't have any applications to show, make some. It doesn't have to be a huge application. Even if it's just a simple landing page, it shows the employer that you have initiative and that you like this field so much that you're willing to work on it on your free time. You'd be surprised by the amount of applicants that don't have anything to show for. Having anything on your page at all will give you a huge edge over the majority of applicants. Okay, so those are my tips for building a good portfolio. And as a bonus, I wanna give you guys a reference of what I used to get my first dev job. I'll put a link to my portfolio in the description below. And in a second, I'll give you guys a glimpse of what cover letter and resume I used to land that first dev job. So this is my resume. As you can see, it's pretty basic. Um, I've got my name, my contact information, um, my professional statement, basically what I'm trying to achieve, one of my goals, I guess. Uh, my work experience in school, not completely related to the jobs that I'm applying for, but I think it's good to have anyway. Um, my education and projects that I've been working on. So this one, was a project that I did at school, and these were projects that I did after, um, after I graduated. So definitely more proud of these than I am this. Um, and yeah, these are my skills uh, of technologies and languages that I had experience in. Um, and that's it for, that's basically my resume. You're welcome to pause it and take a look. Um, and I'm gonna move on to the cover letter. I just have an explanation of kind of where I came from and who I am, trying to give the employer an idea of what my values are and what I've learned and kind of where I'm at in terms of this field um, to see if I'd be a good fit for the job. So that's basically it, guys. Hope that helps to give an idea of what I needed, I guess. This resume and cover letter won't necessarily apply to you, um, but it kind of gives you an idea of what I did and my experiences to get my first job. So as you can see, they aren't really that great. So <laughs> maybe it'll give you a little bit of inspiration like, ah, man, if this guy can do it, then so can I. And that is probably most likely true. Alright guys, that'll do it for me. Let me know what you guys think about the video and what you want to see next in the comment section below. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>